Alright guys, today we're taking a look at a, a voltage regulator, mechanical voltage regulator. This is going to be pretty common on older Cubs. Um, these uh, are basically the cause of about 90% of your charging problems usually happen um, because this thing has not stopped working like it's supposed to. Um, these are pretty archaic and they are for a pretty archaic charging system, that big giant generator thing that hangs off the side of your... Uh, your Kohler engine, this is what controls that and also allows that generator to charge your um, battery. Uh, they usually have four or five um, outputs or inputs as it were. Um, this is an older style. The, old, the newer ones are going to have a, a what's called an L or load which essentially is just the um, generator lug basically shorted to, to the uh, load. The idea there is that it's uh, taking all the switching crap out of the, out of the picture. Um, you don't have to use that if you, do, if you don't have a reason for it, you just cover it up. Um, the other terminals you're going to have are ground, which is what this is over here. Uh, field, which is this one over here. Generator, which goes to the generator lug. And field obviously goes to field lug on the, on the uh, generator. And then you have um, battery. So uh, what these things are designed to do is uh, make the generator produce the um, proper voltage and proper amount of current um, without producing too much voltage or producing too much current. And then they're also designed to disconnect the battery from the um, uh, starter generator so that the battery isn't feeding um, voltage back into the starter generator when it's not producing enough voltage. So um, they're pretty simple devices. There are basically two electromagnets in this one. A current sensing one would have a third coil in here with a third electromagnet. Um, and they basically power these relays. So here is a the cutout side of things. Um, this one disconnects the uh, when it, it gets enough voltage that actually connects the uh, battery to the generator lug over here. Um, and this one over here, when it senses the correct voltage, will disconnect the uh, field coil, which is over here, from ground. It's by default connected to ground. And there's actually, believe it or not, a resistor back here. So it's always actually connected to ground via this 50 ohm resistor back here. But uh, it disconnects it from, uh, from ground to tell the generator to stop developing voltage. So this set point in this one's usually around 14 volts, and this one over here is around 10 or 12 volts. Um, so they come on and off at different times. This one should come on, off and on quite a bit when the tractor is running, actually two or three hundred times a second sometimes. Um, this one over here will only probably click once or twice one, uh, per per running session, unless the, the, the generator stops producing a lot of voltage. Um, they're pretty simple devices. Uh, the set point on this one's not really adjustable. You could, I suppose, bend the bend these tangs and, and provide this a little more spring tension. Some of them have an actual adjustment uh, screw back here. You can you can uh, adjust that, but the spring tension is what actually is the set point for um, when these things open and close. So if you need to adjust one, that's where you would adjust it at. All right, so I have a little lab set up here, and um, I have the obviously the the uh, device itself. Um, I have a multimeter, I have a variable power supply, which is current limited, and then I have an oscilloscope, which I don't really need to have. You can definitely do this with a multimeter, but it's kind of nice to have, and I have one, so um, we'll, we'll use it. Um, the big thing I like to have here for testing is the um, variable power supply. That lets me adjust and see how much uh, this thing's actually needing before it, it does its thing. Um, so the way, this, the way this works is essentially as um, generator power gets put into it, through the uh, generator input lead here, um, it pulls this magnet down. There's an electromagnet, there's a winding inside this, this coil here um, just passes the, the current through, but um, we'll bring this down and we'll see it click here in a second, which closes this circuit from here through here out to the battery terminal, to your battery to charge the system. Um, without this closed, without this down like that, without it down, you're just running off battery power only and that's Probably if your battery's dying slowly as you're using the uh, tractor, that's probably what's causing that. This one over here um, also closes and opens at a certain voltage, but it's the voltage that is um, determined by how tight the spring is back here, basically. But it it is um, telling the, the um, starter generator only to develop a certain amount of voltage. And when it gets to that point, this will open 
which ungrounds the field coil here, which will um, tell the generator to produce more power. So when it's, this is normally closed, this one's normally open, and we'll see what happens when we apply power to it here, just a second. Set the current about halfway, and then I'm gonna keep turning the voltage up and you'll listen for a click, probably around eight volts, I'm guessing, on this. All right, a little over eight, about nine, eight and a half volts it, it clicked. And what you're seeing there, if I turn it back down again, you can see the cutout relay going on and off. Right there. Now if I keep going up to a little bit higher voltage, you can see this other one clicked off around 14 volts, which is, in case you didn't know, about what you should be seeing on the, um, on the device when it's charging properly. So if I leave this around 14, we should have this open and this closed now. If I drop it down between 14 and about 8, this one will be closed and this one will still be closed. And if I go below that cutout voltage, that clicks back up and disconnects the, the generator from the battery circuit. Um, great. So that all seems like it's working okay. So if that wasn't working, you could have some cooked windings in here. That could certainly be the case. Um, but it looks like both of these relays are actually clicking like they're supposed to. So next thing you can check for is continuity, and that probably is where we're going to have an issue. So I have my multimeter here set to continuity mode. Um, I'm going to stick one of the probes here on the field side. I'm going to stick the other one here on the ground side. And right now I don't... got 16 ohms, it looks like. Let me put it in the beeping mode so you can hear it. All right, so you can hear it's got continuity. It's sent to ground. If I get above... 15, you can see it's disconnected from ground, now it's floating, so it's telling the generator not to produce any more power until it gets back below 14. So that seems like it's okay. That seems really all right. So um, that's fine. Now let's check the let's check the, uh, the battery side here. Now right now it should be closed. This is closed. And if I check the continuity between this and this, I have nothing. So my guess is that that is why I'm not getting a charge. So what happens with these things, and this is a pretty common failure mode, over time is that these contacts get gunked up. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to clean these points up. And what I will probably do is um, get a points file out here. You can see this guy right here. Um, just a little very fine file. Use Actually, you can go with the automotive store and get these for filing points. Um, first thing I'm going to do is kind of loosen up this adjustment to make sure I have enough room to get the file in there. I don't want to hog off a ton of material because it would be pretty easy to do. I got, all I got is a pair of freaking needle nose pliers here, which isn't ideal, but it'll work. I'm going to push that down and try and maximize the amount of space I have in there. Um, and then I'm going to take the file and just kind of lightly go over those points. Um, it says it's specifically not to use a piece of emery cloth in the manual, but... Uh, that or a piece of paper, you know, you might be able to find different ways to do this, but um, get that good and clean. And then there's probably an official adjustment you can do. What I'm going to do is just get that down, oops, get that magnet down, and then push the bottom contact up against it. So we're going to click there, and I'm just going to push this up while it's, while it's down at like 10 or 11 volts, so it's... Just make sure that it's engaged. And then we're going to tighten this back down. Make sure it's still everything's still good there. So it'll be close to being adjusted properly. And then make sure it still clicks like we want it to. Alright, and now we're gonna get the continuity out here and we'll see if we did it. Because this terminal here is all corroded, and uh, I'm just going to test to here. I know that I need to clean this up anyway, but if I test to here, I know that this is going to be okay. So I keep going. And at around 9 volts, we have continuity. And everyone still clicks up around 15, so, you know, I think I think we got a... Uh, a Regulator that's going to regulate, finally. More like Warren G. So, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. 
a lot of these little uh, these little issues with these guys. They aren't rocket science. And they really aren't. You just get in there and they're old mechanical devices and you can fix one. They aren't that hard.